we have learned about exchanging self and others. In this course, we will delve into this practice in more detail. We often talk about this practice, and I often encourage you to practice it. However, I noticed that you can really exchange yourself and others. This is particularly evident in terms of knowledge and views. If you cling to your views, you won't observe others' views or emphasize with their views. As a result, you may have conflicts with others regarding views, making it difficult to understand each other. To understand others, it is essential to first understand their views. This is fundamental. If you don't even understand someone's insight, you won't understand their mindset because one's mindset is shaped by one's insight. Whether their insights are wrong, secular, or based on the law of causality in the human or heavenly vehicle, they are all forms of insight. One's viewpoints arise from their insights. You need to understand others. Otherwise, you may impose your views on others, leading to conflicts. Therefore, this practice is very important. Those who cannot exchange themselves and others cannot truly benefit sentient beings. You won't be able to harmonize with and understand others. Hence, exchanging self and others is essential for benefiting sentient beings. Exchanging self and others is also a method to eliminate the attachment to self. In reality, there is no I. There are notions of I and mine. One is clinging to I and the other is believing what I think is correct. As a result, you are strongly attached to your knowledge and views. Since you believe in the existence of I, you believe you are right. You may consider your views as the truth and force others to accept them. After learning the right knowledge and views from the Buddha's teachings, we may also teach others with this mindset. While teaching, we may become attached thinking, my insights are taught by the Guru and the Buddha. Hence, my insights are correct, but yours are wrong. This mindset, too, is incorrect. You should know that your right knowledge and views are only used to deal with wrong views. They are not ultimate truths or absolutely correct insights. Therefore, Please bear in mind that the knowledge and views we learn from the Buddha are just remedies for wrong views. They are not absolute truths. They are the right knowledge and views in a relative sense. Ultimate right knowledge and views cannot be analysed by the conceptual mind. Since they are relatively correct knowledge and views, we should not cling to them. If you cling to your views, you won't break through. We can use the right knowledge and views, but shouldn't be attached to them. Their role is to correct wrong views. Please contemplate this carefully and make sure you understand it well. We often make this mistake. When you strongly cling to your views, you may not realise that there is a problem. This is the most serious and dangerous problem. If you, as a monastic or Mahayana practitioner, cannot empathize with others, that is terrible. You may often impose your views on others and cannot skillfully guide others based on their circumstances. A genuine bodhisattva does not cling to their insights. They guide others based on others' views. They first exchange themselves and the sentient being, observing the being's views. Then they guide the being with a slightly higher insight than the being's current one. It is ineffective to guide others with too advanced insights as they may not understand or be willing to listen.
If the insights you share are slightly higher than the other person's, they will listen with great joy. They will consider you remarkable, which is a good sign. It is essential to share insights that they can precisely accept. It will be ineffective to share insights beyond their capacity. Therefore, it is essential to practice exchanging self and others before teaching others. If you cannot even practice this, you are not qualified to be a Dharma teacher, and I will never acknowledge you. You may think, I am already enlightened, but why doesn't the Guru recognize me? Well, if you don't even understand the practice of exchanging self and others, how can you attain enlightenment? You may consider yourself enlightened, but you are wrong. Some people often ask me, Teacher, when will you certify me? In my heart, I think, your ego is so strong. How can I possibly certify you? If you have eliminated the ego and can properly exchange yourself and others, I will certify you. Otherwise, if you become a devil, it will be problematic. If I were to certify you, it would be certifying a devil. As long as you have the ego, you are vulnerable to the influence of devils. Do you understand? Unless you uproot the ego, it will cause trouble when it expands. In my next life, I may find that my previous disciple turns into a devil. I may plan to become a monastic under your guidance. But you become a devil. How dangerous. Therefore, I cannot casually certify anyone. I encourage you to practice exchanging self and others earnestly. Now, let's start to learn this practice. In Tibetan Buddhism, in addition to the seven steps of cause and effect meditation to generate Buddhacitta by Lama Atisha, there is another important lineage of cultivating Buddhacitta, known as exchanging self and others, taught by Shantideva. Shantideva was an Indian scholar of the Middle Way School, active around the 8th century CE. His lineage was the system of profound wisdom of Manjushi and Nagarjuna. The practice of exchanging self and others comes from the way of the Bodhisattva by Shantideva, which is one of his most significant treatises and has had a wide-ranging influence. During the second year of the Yongzhu era in the Song dynasty, 985 CE, This treatise was translated into Chinese by Deva Shantiva, but did not receive much attention. In recent times, Venerable Longlian, a disciple of Guru Ningai and Venerable Ruxi, have translated this treatise again respectively, attracting the attention of many Buddhist practitioners. It indicates that this treatise is also available in China. It had been translated into Chinese during the Song dynasty. We should know that Shantideva was an Indian, not a Tibetan. In the year 985 CE, Buddhism was still flourishing in India. In recent years, there has been a surge of interest in studying the way of the Bodhisattva, which is a good phenomenon. In the stages of the path to enlightenment, the practice of exchanging self and others is primarily explained from four aspects. The significance of exchanging self and others, the principles of exchanging self and others how to practice exchanging self and others, and the level of bodhicitta one should reach. The Significance of Exchanging Self and Others The Way of the Bodhisattva states, those who wish to save themselves and others swiftly should practice exchanging self and others. This is a profound practice. 
Moreover, it states, All happiness in the world arises from wishing others to be happy, and all suffering in the world arises from seeking one's own happiness. Ignorant beings seek to benefit themselves, while the Buddha aspires to benefit others. Look at the difference between them. Is there any need for a lengthy explanation? If I don't exchange my happiness for others' suffering, I won't attain a Buddhahood, nor will I obtain happiness in samsara. Attachment to oneself is the root of all suffering, while benefiting others is the source of all happiness. We should contemplate this. These verses from The Way of the Buddhasattva illustrate the significance of exchanging self and others. The Way of the Buddhasattva is one of the most authoritative treatises on the practice of Buddhacitta and is very influential in Tibet. Its notable characteristic is its thorough explanation of the principles of Buddhasattva practice, making us feel that this is what we should do without any room for retreat. The Way of the Buddhasattva states, Those who wish to save themselves and others swiftly should practice exchanging self and others. This is a profound practice. The meaning is, whether one wishes to benefit oneself or others swiftly, one should practice exchanging self and others. This is a profound practice, a shortcut to enlightenment. You should practice it earnestly. The following three verses are also from the way of the Buddhasattva. Moreover, it states, all happiness in the world arises from wishing others to be happy, and all suffering in the world arises from seeking one's own happiness. The meaning is, all happiness in the world arises from wishing others and all sentient beings to be happy. All suffering in the world arises from solely seeking one's own happiness. This differs significantly from the common perception of worldly people. We may think that we can only attain happiness by focusing on our own needs. How could working for the benefit of others make us happy? Isn't that strange? Shantideva then provides a convincing example to prove this view. Ignorant beings seek to benefit themselves, while the Buddha aspires to benefit others. Look at the difference between them. Is there any need for a lengthy explanation? This verse illustrates the necessity of benefiting others by comparing ordinary beings and the Buddha. The biggest characteristic of ordinary beings is self-centeredness. They always seek to benefit themselves. However, they are constantly creating suffering in the cycle of reincarnation. On the other hand, the Buddha has boundless compassion. From the beginning of his Buddhasattva practice to his enlightenment and subsequent propagation of the Dharma for the benefit of sentient beings, he never thought about himself. As a result, he achieved great liberation and freedom. If we observe the different results brought about by these two mindsets, is there any need for further explanation? It is sufficient to prove this view. If we aspire to attain the Buddha's compassion and wisdom, we should follow his example to benefit others selflessly. If we continue our samsaric habits, we will inevitably experience endless suffering. This is explained clearly here. In addition to the Buddha, the Buddhasattvas too have been benefiting others selflessly throughout countless kalpas. It is easy to understand that when benefiting others selflessly, one has less attachment. If I don't exchange my happiness for others' suffering, I won't attain a Buddhahood, nor will I obtain happiness in the samsara.
Ordinary beings usually only seek happiness for themselves, but ignore the suffering of others. If we don't change this mindset and shift our focus to caring for sentient beings while disregarding ourselves, we won't attain a Buddhahood. Moreover, we cannot even attain imperfect worldly happiness. Our current life situation has proven that the samsaric path doesn't work. It can only bring us suffering. If we follow this path, we can only strengthen our ego, cultivate greed, anger and ignorance, and create suffering continuously. The main idea behind exchanging self and others is that without this exchange, we cannot attain Buddhahood. We can only experience suffering. This is the truth of life that we must see. Attachment to oneself is the root of all suffering, while benefiting others is the source of all happiness. We should contemplate this. The mindset of caring for and clinging to oneself is the root of all misfortune, afflictions and suffering. Conversely, the mindset of caring for all sentient beings and wishing for their well-being is the key to attaining all worldly blessings and achieving Buddhahood. We need to contemplate this principle repeatedly. This verse is the key to the practice of Buddhacitta and one of the essential teachings in the stages of the path to enlightenment. The principle of exchanging self and others differs significantly from the samsaric mind. However, as long as one understands the Buddha's teachings to some extent, one should be able to accept this principle. Why is the life of ordinary beings full of suffering? Because it is based on ignorance and self-attachment. It is a machine that generates suffering, and self-attachment is its core component. If we don't address the root of the problem, suffering will never cease. You should understand that your clinging to I is just an attachment. There is no real I. Self-attachment can be eradicated. If there were a real I, it would be impossible to eliminate it. Self-attachment is just an attachment. Therefore, there are ways to deal with it.